Assalamu alaikum, my name is Marwan Faris and today I'll be explaining the external features of the heart. So uh, just a quick orientation, in a nutshell the heart is a conical structure that's found in the mediastinum and it is made up of a part called the apex which is over here, a part posteriorly called the base on the back side. We have four borders, so one is superior, one is on the right side, one is inferior and we have one on the left side. And we have four surfaces, one anteriorly, one posteriorly, and one on either side. We have four grooves, and it is enclosed in a sheath called the uh, pericardium, and I'll get to that in the coming slides. So, starting off with the apex, it is this inferior point down here that's formed by the left ventricle. It's directed downwards and towards the left side. And where it lies anatomically is the uh, left fifth intercostal space at the midclavicular line. Uh, here, you would, if you would palpate, you would feel the maximum impulse anywhere on the chest in a person with a normal-sized heart, and you can also auscultate for the mitral valve. Moving on to the base. So the base is this kind of rectangular structure found on the posterior end, and it is more superior, whereas the apex is down there inferiorly. So it is formed mainly by the left atrium, which is here. This is the left side. And there's a small part that's formed by the right atrium. And if you can see in this image, uh, on the back side, so this is the base. On the back side of it, we have the vertebral column. And more specifically, we have the T5 to T8 uh, vertebrae. And then uh, Posteriorly related to this base, we have the uh, pulmonary veins. So these are the pulmonary veins here. And we also have the uh, esophagus, which is covered in this image, but it goes down this way, related posteriorly to the base. So here's the base. On the posterior aspect, we have the esophagus and also the descending aorta. So this is the aorta. It arches over and then it descends. So that's the posterior relation. And then uh, finally, the, uh, the base is limited inferiorly by this part here, which is called the coronary groove, and it uh, contains a large vein called the coronary sinus. So now moving on to the borders of the heart, we have four borders. So starting off with the superior border, it's formed mainly by the left atrium and partly by the right atrium, but uh, we cannot see the left atrium here very clearly because uh, it is hidden behind the pulmonary trunk, which is this big uh, vessel here and the aorta. Uh, then we have the right border, which is over here. And it is formed mainly by the, or sorry, it's formed by the right atrium. It extends between the opening of the superior vena cava, which is here, and the opening of the inferior vena cava, which comes down here. Uh, and that would be from the level of the third coastal cartilage from the SVC and the sixth coastal cartilage of the IVC. Uh, afterwards, we have the inferior border down here. So it is formed mostly by the right ventricle. And we have a small bit that's formed by the left ventricle. Uh, and you can see it's kind of curving like that. Uh, and then finally, we have the left border, which is this bit here. So it is formed mainly by the left ventricle. And we have a small bit up here that's formed by part of the left atrium called the left oracle. Uh, so then we have the surfaces of the heart. So starting off with the two main ones. So we have the anterior and the more posterior one. So starting off with the anterior one, it's called the sternocostal surface. Sterno means sternum and costal refers to the ribs. So this is the anterior surface related to the sternum and the ribs. Uh, so you can see it's divided by this structure called the coronary groove over here into two parts. We have the atrial part above and we have the ventricular part uh, below. 
So you can see the atrial part is formed mainly by the right atrium and this left auricle over here. So right atrium, right atrium, left auricle. And uh, we have a ventricular part below, which is formed mainly by the right ventricle. So that's the right two-thirds. Uh, sorry, there's a small mistake in the text. Right two-thirds and then the left one-thirds is formed by the uh, left ventricle. And in between the two ventricles, we have another groove here, and I'll explain more later. It's called the anterior interventricular groove. So that's the sternocostal or anterior surface. Now we also have the inferior surface, which is this part over here. So if you guys remember from the previous slides, this here is the base. And then directly below the base, we have the inferior surface or diaphragmatic surface because it's related to the diaphragm. So uh, here we have the left two thirds from the left ventricle and the right one third from the right ventricle. So this is opposite to the uh, sternocostal surface. The sternocostal surface, right two thirds from right ventricle and then uh, the left one third is from the left ventricle. Whereas here left two thirds, left ventricle and the uh, right one third from the right ventricle. So again, we have another groove between the two ventricles down here. Groove is like a line, so we call this one posterior interventricular groove. This here is the anterior interventricular groove. Uh, so why do we call it diaphragmatic? It's related to the central tendon of the diaphragm and partly to the left uh, cupola of the diaphragm. <clears throat> so moving on, uh, we have the left and the right surfaces. So this is an anterior view. Uh, and this here is the left surface. And that here is the right surface. So the left surface is formed mainly by the left ventricle and partly by the uh, left atrium or left auricle. And it's related to the pericardium, which is the sac enclosing the heart. And I'll get to that later. And then we have the left phrenic nerve, which is the yellow structure you can see here. And we also have the pericardiophrenic vessels, which are artery in red and vein in blue. And then we have the left lung and the left pleura, which encases the lung. And on the right side, it's uh, the same exact thing. It's formed here only by the right atrium. And again, related to the pericardium, we have the right phrenic nerve, which is the yellow structure. The right pericardiophrenic vessels, which are artery in red and veins in blue. And finally, we have the right lung with its uh, sac, which is the right pleura. So uh, I would recommend you guys go on complete anatomy and have a good look at these structures. <clears throat> Moving on, we have grooves in the heart. And uh, we said we have four grooves. So we have the atrioventricular groove. From the name atrioventricular, it splits between the atria and the ventricles. So here, like that, and then posteriorly, like that. So uh, what does it contain? It contains the coronary vessels, the coronary arteries. So we have the right coronary artery coming out this way. And we have the left coronary artery coming out this way. And then on the back side, we have this large vein called the coronary sinus. So that's the atrioventricular groove. Now we have the interatrial groove. So from the name interatrial means between the atria. Okay, and moving on, we have the posterior interventricular groove. If you remember from the previous slide, this is on the back side and it's between the two ventricles. We have left two third and right one third. And uh, this groove contains an artery called the posterior interventricular artery, which is this one you can see here, and this vein, which is called the middle cardiac vein. And on the front side, we have the anterior interventricular groove. This time we have the right two thirds and the left one thirds of the ventricles. So this anterior interventricular groove uh, has an artery called the anterior interventricular artery. And we have a vein in blue called the great cardiac vein. The anterior interventricular artery is also called the left anterior descending artery. So moving on, 
so the heart is enclosed in a sac called the pericardium, okay? So the pericardium is a fibrocerous sac, and I'll get to why it's called a fibrocerous sac that surrounds the heart and the beginning of the great vessels, okay? So it is called fibrocerous because it's made of two layers. We have an outer fibrous layer, so fibro, and then an inner serous layer. So whenever you think of, or whenever you hear the word serous, think of serum, which is fluid. So this serous pericardium has two layers as well. Parietal layer, which is closely related to the fibrous pericardium, and then visceral layer. And this visceral layer is directly related to the heart, okay? And between the two layers, we have the serum, the fluid, okay? It's called pericardial fluid. So... Um, why do we need the heart to be enclosed in the sac? Uh, so the fibrous pericardium will keep the heart in place. So it will prevent it from moving left, right, forward and backward. It will keep it in its place in the mediastinum. And uh, it will prevent the heart from overfilling when it's beating. And while the heart is beating, it's going to reduce the amount of friction that's generated. And also it will protect it from spread of infection from surrounding structures. So uh, the two layers of the pericardium, again, we have the fibrous pericardium, which is the outermost layer. You can see it here in the green. It's the strong outer layer and it fuses with the great walls, uh, sorry, walls of the great vessel superiorly. You can see it here. And then on the bottom side, it fuses with the central tendon of the diaphragm. And then anteriorly, it's attached to the sternum by sternopericardial ligaments. So all of these attachments to the surrounding structure make sure the heart stays in its place. Uh, and then the serous pericardium. So we have the uh, visceral layer, which is here. And then we have the parietal layer, which is here. And then in between them, we have the pericardial cavity, which contains the pericardial fluid. So... Uh, <clears throat> This parietal layer is stuck to the fibrous layer and the visceral layer is stuck to the heart. And uh, if you guys study the layer of the hearts, the heart has three layers. The outermost layer is called the epicardium and it is the same as the visceral pericardium. Okay, so uh, we have spaces that are created by the... Uh, pericardium that we call pericardial sinuses uh, and these can be better appreciated in cadavers in the lab if you guys have a chance to uh, go to the labs and have a look so the first one and the more important one is called the transverse sinus so this is a passageway that's created uh, during embryological folding of the heart so you will learn in embryology that the heart starts off as a tube and then it folds and then this fold uh, creates the space that is bounded anteriorly by the ascending aorta and the pulmonary trunk and posteriorly by the superior vena cava. So you can insert your finger in between those two, uh, in between those structures and you will reach the transverse sinus. And why is this important? Because during cardiac surgery, you can ligate these vessels uh, so that you can stop the function of the heart and just perform the surgery. Uh, now we have another sinus called the oblique sinus and how do you reach it? You go inferior and kind of posterior to the heart and it will be located in this area. It's a blind ended space so you can only go in from this one side and you can't come out from the other side. Uh, it lies between the pulmonary veins which you can see here, these four structures right and left and the inferior vena cava, which as you can see here. So this is the space, the oblique sinus. It is anteriorly related to the posterior wall of the left atrium and posteriorly related to the esophagus, which you can, uh, you would see coming down here. It's not drawn here. It would come down here. Okay, so those are the pericardial sinuses. Now the nerve supply of the pericardium uh, again, we have a fibrous pericardium, and then we have two layers of the serous pericardium, parietal and visceral. So the fibrous and parietal pericardium have the same nerve supply, 
they're supplied by the phrenic nerve and uh, if there's inflammation or anything in these layers it would produce pain because the phrenic nerve is a somatic nerve and this pain would be referred to the C3, C5 dermatomes whereas the visceral layer of the serous pericardium which is this layer the inner layer attached to the wall of the heart it only has parasympathetic and sympathetic innervation so autonomic fibers only coming from the vagus nerve and the sympathetic fibers so in case of irritation it is not a source of pain so you might get this question in the exam uh, which uh, irritation of which layer would cause pain so the answer would be fibrous or parietal pericardium so applied anatomy uh, of the pericardium so if you guys recall from the previous slides we have this fluid between the uh, serous pericardium layers called the pericardial fluid so sometimes there would be accumulation of too much fluid in this space and uh, you would have something like this called pericardial effusion okay so if the fluid accumulates to a certain degree it will compress the heart and prevent it from filling and prevent it from functioning and beating properly and this is a, a medical emergency called cardiac tamponade and you need to drain the fluid from the space so how do you drain this fluid from the space uh, we use a procedure called pericardiocentesis which is inserting a needle uh, in between the uh, two layers of the serous pericardium and then you would take the excess fluid out so where do you insert the needle you would insert it in this kind of angle over here so this is the left costoziphoid angle right before uh, right below the uh, ziphoid process of the sternum and uh, there's also another area where you can pass it which is the um, fourth or fifth intercostal space but this time close to the sternum because in this area the heart is not uh, overlaid by the lungs in case you go somewhere where the lung is you can puncture the lung and cause a lung collapse or pneumothorax uh, so that would conclude the uh, lecture about external features of, this, of the heart uh, if there's any feedback I would love to hear from you and if there's anything that needs more explanation I would love to help and thank you yeah.